the nostalgia, the tradition, the magic, the memories, and the madness in a thousand points of improvised dialogue. Theme Park Thursday with Dillo's Diz on the Improviser's Guide Network. Now is the time... Forever? Mr. Morrow. Old. A minute and a half. Hashtag always MGM. Yeah, right? Old, old, old. The Drink. secret staircase. We always do that. You are approaching the unloading area. Behold the majesty of the Sistine Seal. For the kids. A salute to all theme parks, but mostly Walt Disney World. Ha! What a cute ending. Aloha and welcome aboard. This is Theme Park Thursday with Dillo's Diz. She is Jen. Hello. And I am Frank, and we are here for the season three premiere. <laughs> it's here. It's we don't know how we that calculate. We, have seasons. You <laughs> we don't, don't know why. It's not proper calculations. <laughs> That's pretty much every October we decide to start a new <laughs> season, and there's no episode count within our seasons. It's totally fine, but we wanted this in particular to be the season three premiere because of our guest today. Right, because it's a pretty big guest. It's a pretty I big mean, deal. Yeah, right. It's <laughs> a, a big very guest. big deal for us. <laughs> right. So we're going to jump right into it because this December will be 30 years since the first time we saw this performer do his thing at hashtag always MGM. And I'm 25. Well, you know, well, oh, well no, you, you know how old you are. I know, <laughs> I know. <laughs> uh, if you have seen him at, you, you most assuredly have seen him at the studios as Jack Diamond. You may have seen him at the Diamond Horseshoe Review we first got to know him as the great HP, and we'll jump right all into that. But <laughs> please welcome, Etch. I mean, it's an icon at Walt Disney World. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> totally. <laughs> Terry Ward, thank you so much for being here. Well, it's my pleasure. Thank you for having me. Thank you. I want We're to start excited. at the very beginning. <laughs> it's exciting. We're going to try to play excited. it cool. We're okay. Gonna okay, okay, cool. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm going to ask a lot of questions that I've always wanted to ask you because I feel like all of our conversations over these 30 years are, you know, five minute spurts here and there. Yeah, I know. <laughs> uh, so, you know, in a kind of a chicken and egg scenario, what came first? Did the magic come first or did the performance come first? Uh, the magic came first. Hmm. I started doing magic when I was a young kid messing around with it, you know, and then my mother bumped into a guy over in Germany who knew magic. And uh, so I'd go bag groceries. And then when I made enough money, I'd go to his uh, place and take a lesson. Nice. That's cool. And uh, uh, I did that for quite a while until we moved back to the States. And then we were lucky enough to move back to the uh, Washington, D.C. metropolitan area. And uh, a lot of great magicians and a lot of good magic there. I mean, I saw one as a kid that just like hooked me. I was in, I think, Cub Scouts and we had a magician come in and I just thought everything he did was just phenomenal. He was funny. He had a, I mean, we had a reoccurring gag that happened throughout the show. And so it was very memorable. I still remember it as a kid. You know, I still remember him. He did the, uh, where you pour the water out of the vase and then he'd go do a couple other things. He'd come back and he it was empty and then he'd pour it all out again. <laughs> and, and it was just, and he just ran throughout the whole show. And um, you know, I just thought it was a, a funny thing. Yeah. I went to um, community college there and started studying theater. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was like, I like this theater thing. And I found out <laughs> a friend had gone down to a, school in North Carolina called Catawba College and they had a school of performing arts so I went there for school uh, my I did like my freshman year at the community college and then I went down there for my what well, would have been my sophomore year but I did the five-year plan <laughs> and um, it was a, a great school and I noticed that every year as I took theater classes my magic got better and as I did more magic over the summer uh, uh, the theater also got better. So they kind of, you know, helped each other out. Yeah. Junior and senior year, we were in um, Frankfurt, 
Frankfurt, Germany. And I started to get into theater and I had a teacher named Mr. Smith and I just thought he was marvelous. And um, I had uh, my, what was it? My, my senior year, I moved back to the States. So it was my junior year was spent there and my senior year, we moved back to the States. Mm -hmm. And uh, my senior year, I got into theater and I, I had a great uh, theater teacher. We call her Mrs. D. And she was just uh, phenomenal. And she was, she did a lot of uh, improv stuff in classes, which I just thought was fascinating to me. And uh, I liked the, uh, I liked the way you just went with it. And uh, we had, we had some marvelous times in class and uh, she was a good teacher. I still, you know, think of her these days uh, uh, anytime I'm doing something because whether she believes it or not, she, she left an impression upon me. Mm -hmm. And so did Mr. Smith, uh, my teacher in uh, Frankfurt, Germany. You know, before I got into performing, I played baseball, and that's pretty much all I did. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I, I thought the transition into theater was an easy one for me on different levels because I played baseball. But uh -huh. a lot of it, I think, when especially when I started learning improv, as you were saying, that it, the instinct involved like doing improv to me remind me of like hitting a baseball like i'm gonna hit this one i'm not gonna hit right. this one i'm gonna hit this one um do you think the improv you're you clicking onto improv like that connected to the magic portion of the instinct too i don't know how much i think it did because I'm, I'm i've never been uh one who was good at uh, sitting down and scripting something mm -hmm. um i've read a lot of books on it but i've always been better getting up on my feet and working through a routine and improving through it and then finding, Oh, that sounded good. And then maybe writing down, Oh, that worked. You mm -hmm. know, mm -hmm. I've never been good about just sitting down and writing a script for something. That's never been one of my fortes. I'm, I'm better at putting something up on my feet and working through it yeah. than putting it in front of an audience and see what works and what doesn't. And, um, and then making changes from there. I wish I was better at script writing because I find people have a phenomenal ability to write jokes about things. And um, mm -hmm. a lot of my jokes, I think, come from the interaction of the crowd. Now, as the, uh, the magic is still, you're educating yourself on magic all throughout college too? You, uh, you, uh, all throughout. As a matter of fact, I would go study uh, theater through school and and keep working on magic in my spare time, which wasn't a lot. And then I, uh, I, I got a job at, I, d I auditioned at Carowinds in uh, North Carolina mm -hmm. and they didn't have a position for me, but their sister park Kings Dominion did. Uh, mm -hmm. So they hired me and that was about an hour and 10 minutes away from where my folks lived at the time. And, Springfield, Virginia. Hmm. So I, for three weeks, I drove that hour and 15 minutes to Kings Dominion and then that night drove back. Mm -hmm. And after three weeks of that, I decided that's not work. <laughs> <laughs> Cause the traffic between, that's like right outside of Washington DC. Uh, yeah. yeah. It was a madhouse. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I got a, I rented a room from a elderly lady in, in a little town called Ashland, Virginia and uh, worked at King's Dominion doing magic. And the reason I did that is I auditioned for summer stock stuff, mm -hmm. but King's Dominion paid a lot more. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, I had to work six days. Now that I think about it, working six days and doing five shows a day, I was like, oh my gosh, oh my goodness, yeah. I couldn't do that anymore. Yeah. <laughs> I got to have my two days off. <laughs> From King's Dominion, do you go to the Disney auditions? Do the Disney auditions come to you? How does that all happen? Actually, um, uh, I did that at King's Dominion. I worked there for like five seasons. Hmm. And um, the fourth season, uh, after I graduated from college, a buddy of mine, a couple of buddies of mine were trying to open a theater down South Florida hmm. in uh, Fort Myers. So I moved down and lived in a house with them and, we kind of tried the theater thing, but the problem at the time is Fort Myers uh, during the summer was empty. There was nobody there. And during the winter, the population like tripled. Mm -hmm. Now, today, the population pretty much stays about the same. Right. Yeah. But at the time, um, so 
we were just finding it difficult during the summer to, I mean, yeah, during the summer to, to make a living. It was getting tough. So we kind of went our separate ways and each of us went on to do different things. I went back to Kings Dominion one more season. And then I was uh, talking to a, and then I went up to New York. Um, I actually went to New Jersey. My parents had moved. Mm -hmm. uh, my, uh, they moved my junior year of college to New Jersey. And my father worked up there. And so my six hour drive home became a 12 hour drive home, <laughs> which was wicked. Yeah. Uh, six wasn't bad, 12 too much. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. But uh, so I'd, um, I got him to live with my folks for a while and I was trying to go into New York City and do that New York City actor thing. <laughs> uh, I had met up with a former alumni of my college who was big into commercial work. Okay. And so I went around with him for a day and he was a fascinating uh, man, very nice of him to kind of let me tag along with him as he went to some of his commercial auditions. But every room that we went into, everybody looked like him. <laughs> and I was like, how does anybody make a living? <laughs> 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 and plus I wasn't, that the, the city wasn't the nicest back then as it is yeah. now, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it, I just discovered I wasn't a big city person. Yeah. So a buddy of mine who works at, on Main Street uh, at the uh, Magic Kingdom now, Mark Miller, as uh, he's the chief Miller there, mm -hmm. he uh, was working at Walt Disney World, and uh, I came down to visit him, and he got me an audition with, uh, at the time, was a gentleman by the name of Ronnie Rodriguez. Mm -hmm. And I went in and did a monologue and then did some magic, and they asked, no, I did the monologue first and he says, can you come back and do some magic for us? And I was like, oh, <laughs> oh, well, okay. And I went out and I had my street bag, but I didn't have all my props in my street bag. So I just came up with kind of a couple routines out of what I had in my street bag. Because mm -hmm. at the time I was just busking in downtown Orlando at a place called Church Street. Mm -hmm. So at nighttime I'd go down to Church Street and I'd busk and yeah. make a couple hundred bucks. And, <laughs> and then, uh, go home and sleep on Mark Miller's couch. <laughs> but then I got that audition. Very Orlando, actually. <laughs> Isn't it? Isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, uh, and after, after doing that for uh, six months, uh, I um, finally got an apartment and uh, I kept auditioning for Disney. And um, that last audition where he said, can you do some magic? I came in, did some magic. And I got a call like two weeks later. And they said, we're putting you in the uh, streetmosphere program. I was like, okay, cool. <laughs> and I found that it was more improv based. And I was like, oh, even better. Mm -hmm. and, and then uh, we met uh, the director, Gary, at the time. Mm -hmm. And he was a phenomenal uh, teacher and liked working with him a lot. Yeah. And he, you know, I, my first character didn't even do magic. He was a paper boy. <laughs> Oh, I, oh were, you, was that open, were you opening cast as the paper boy? I was, or not, the, the, I was yeah. not the opening cast of the studios. Okay. There was another cast. I was the six month in cast. The six month in cast. Because okay. they discovered that some of the actors they hired just had difficulty with breaking that fourth wall. Mm -hmm. And uh, none of the people who came from the Renaissance Festival area, <laughs> because they did that on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, so um, uh, I came in six months and replaced. Uh, some people who were let go at the time okay. Okay. and my first character was a paper boy and so I did a paper boy character for a little while and they kept saying they were going to get me a costume and to do a, a magic type character and it never came and it never came so I was like put my own costume together and went out on the streets and did my own used my own costume nice. <laughs> and started doing shows and then they went oh <laughs> okay uh, this works okay and that's, when, that's when the great HP was born
You know, the first time that we saw you in December of 90, I had I had gotten pulled into a bit that you were like a periphery of with a couple of the other characters. But I remember mm -hmm. going back the next morning because once I got pulled into a bit, that was it. It was over. I was sucked in. <laughs> and I was like, we got to go to the studios every day. And, uh, and again, not knowing I was going to be a performer at the time, I just loved watching the performers. It was like this mm -hmm. new level of Walt Disney World for me that I yeah. didn't really know existed. And um, that so the following day, it was the morning, I remember, and we, again, we have our VHS archives that uh, <laughs> I, I that's the first time I remember seeing your whole bit, which, you know, like your whole 20 minutes, I guess, and yes. uh, yeah, doing the magic. And I was like, what is happening right now? And and, I, and vividly, I recall, and it helps that I have the video, but it's been a while since I watched it. That <laughs> you, I remember you asking me where I was from, like straight into the camera. Um, and then, and I remember also, and I'll have to dig this up. I don't know if we have it. Uh, there was a business card that said uh, the great HP magic for all occasions. How do yes. we do it very well? Yes. yes. <laughs> I can like picture that card. It's somewhere. Yeah. We have it somewhere for sure. <laughs> yeah. um, that was it. I thought that was a great idea too, business cards. I thought that was a, a phenomenal yeah. way to, for people to remember who you were. And yeah. People came back and had them in their wallets and mm -hmm. they had a lot of people would come back. Oh, I met you before, you know. Yeah. yeah and that, and that's, a, that's that time period. The characters are making such a lasting impression and definitely you know, the business card helped that. There were so many of them then too. We had almost 30 <laughs> different characters on the street at, at that time. Yeah. Uh, now we're down to uh, seven a day, but there oh were, there were 30 of us at that time and wow. just phenomenal people with some of the neatest uh, character choices. Uh, mm -hmm. We had a has-been actress that, walked down the street in this very, she was very thin and tall and statuesque and you, you just couldn't stop, but stop and notice her. And mm -hmm. uh, there were so many people there that, yeah, uh, you know, now we have uh, um, one of our detectives is an Emmy award winner mm -hmm. work, work on the everybody loves Raymond show. And we had uh, one of the ladies who was a cleaning lady who uh, was an Oscar winner. She was on West wing and, um, so it would just just phenomenal people you got to work with, and you learned so much from me. every one of them you work with because they came from so many different backgrounds. We had people who came from circus backgrounds. We had people who came from the Renaissance Festival uh, area, and they had so much to teach us about, you know, uh, bringing uh, the streets to life. It was a great. It was a great, not only a great place to perform, but a great place to learn and watch. Hmm. Yeah. The uh, you mentioned Gary Izzo and just that interactive theater element that he does so well. As you were doing your set of magic during that time period, like did it take time to figure out which tricks were the hitting the best in terms of the interactive theater element, or did you did you move in, them in and out for a while? It to did. See? I had to figure out you know which ones worked well uh, with the audience and for me, mm -hmm. and uh, but they came most of them came pretty quick. Some of them took a little bit longer than others. My uh, pee and shell game, which has become my favorite, is uh, the one that I think I like doing the most now. But uh, in, uh, and I look back at some of the video of me as a younger guy there, and I'm like, oh, oh, God, Damn, oh, what was I thinking? You know, but so much. Uh, I think uh, even coming up with the character Jack Diamond, he's so much more relaxed than mm -hmm. I was as a younger performer mm -hmm. and more comfortable. And I think also what helped that out was when I made the transition to the Diamond Horseshoe and I took all the stuff I learned on stage. And when I went back to the street, I took mm -hmm. that all with me. Yeah. So yeah. I think that was, a, that was an important process for me. And you actually made us feel cool because anytime we would come back, it felt like you remembered us and we're like, oh my God, he like knows who we are. Like, and we would just. I'm, I'm really good with faces, horrible with names. So. Yeah. <laughs> but it's, yeah, you, uh, there's some people that come back and you, 
you know you've seen them before and, mm -hmm. and you're like um so you and if they greet you with that smile and that look at their eye that they've seen you before yeah. <laughs> sometimes you just kind of got to go with it yeah. hey, ben, what, are you, what have you been up to you know? yeah and that was us we're like oh my god who's talking about there are us? certain people who stick out because you know some folks who like to hang out and play mm -hmm. and be a part of things uh, and you can definitely see that they're enjoying what they're watching yeah and you got to see back in the time when we had like daily scenarios when people were getting married and there was, you know, there was somebody who was being elected to office and that <laughs> ran throughout the day. So you had to, you kind of had to follow us to see what was going to happen. Yeah. There were a couple along the way that I learned and uh, one of my uh, uh, actual students uh, who's uh, become quite a very good magician. <laughs> Uh, winner of the close-up magician of the year at the Magic Castle a few years back. His name's uh, John Armstrong. Uh, he came to me as he told me he was 16. He was actually only 14 because <laughs> he was afraid I wouldn't teach him. But I took him on as a student, and he ended up working at Epcot at the uh, Rosen Crown, oh, wow. nice. and then moved out to California and now lives in LA and uh, works all over the country in Disney cruise ships, doing very well for himself. That's awesome. Well, the horseshoe, they closed the horseshoe in 2003, and I had, I had heard rumblings that something was going on. And usually when you start to hear rumors, it usually means something's going to happen. <laughs> mm -hmm. So yeah. I went and uh, I gave a call to the director at Citizens of Hollywood at the time. It was called, I still called Streetmosphere. And I asked if you had anything open, I would really appreciate a job there mm. to go back to and his name was John Phelan marvelous uh, director mm. and we had John Phelan and another director named Tom Vizano at the time and so he was nice enough to bring me back and so that's when I worked on um, the new character uh, but uh, Jack Diamond didn't come till uh, uh, about a year and a half later we had a gentleman who from the Renaissance world who used to work with us, Mark Renfro, became our director. And he was, you know, Renaissance trained. So he really, and a clown trained and just really knew his stuff. Mm -hmm. And I, just a, a great guy to work with. So he said that the character I was doing at the time, uh, I don't can't even, I think I was still calling him the great HP. Mm -hmm. but he said that he was too curmudgeon -y. <laughs> so he wanted him to have a more life. Okay. And uh, he always had this thing that you have to be fliffy, which is funny, interesting, fun, likable. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that was his little saying. And so, um, so I took and renamed the character Jack Diamond, figuring, well, that that right there, that tells you who I am. Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, got the business cards made again. Mm -hmm. And he, he was a, a lot more fun to work because he was a little bit more lighthearted and easier. The first, the first one was, he was too curmudgeon too kind of, uh, <laughs> and, and he came, and Mark said, yeah, find a song that, you know, that you think about when you go out on set. And I think that helped me out a lot too. So I found a song that that was my way out on street was to sing that song in my head. And uh, it made him a little more lighthearted. And uh, it was a difficult transition, too, to come from the horseshoe back to the street because you kind of felt like you were taking a step back. Because mm -hmm. I'd been on a stage. I had my own stage or indoors. And then I had, and I just hit 40, I think. 40, 40 yeah. Mm -hmm. And so at the age of 40, boom, back to the street. And I was like, oh, <laughs> man. Yeah. You know, and I was like, but, um, but I started to see that you know, things had gotten better and changed and I worked an audience better, street audience better. And because of Mark's direction, I think that helped out because uh, not only he knew some magic, so that I think helped out a lot. Mm -hmm. Is uh, revealing that song a uh, part of like the, you don't want to reveal this, the secrets of magic. I don't know if I want to. I want oh, to no, I don't, I don't mind at all. It was, um, uh, um, if they could uh, see me now, that little gang of mine. Oh, all right. I'm eating fancy food and drinking fancy wines. Like <laughs> Sammy Davis Jr. version. 
that was nice. the, that was my step out on stage and <laughs> on those days when you're like oh really do this again you just i just think of that song <laughs> step out on stage and I think it's, I, I know it was years, years that I, until I realized, you know, when they have the thing now where you say, I was this many years old when I learned this, <laughs> it took me forever to realize that HP meant hocus pocus. Is that? Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> is that I just learned that right now. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I stood for, the great hocus pocus. I, I wanted to get that confirmed because I don't think I heard that from you directly. I think I heard that elsewhere. And I was like, is that true? Or does he have an actual name? I built, I built the- that in so it was a question. And because um, uh, uh, Gary said that it's neat if people ask you questions about yourself. Mm-hmm. So I said, instead of just calling him the great Hocus Pocus, I'm going to call him the great HP. And then people would ask, well, what's HP stand for? And then I would get to, you know, that would bring in the people and yeah. you know, make them mm-hmm. interact with you. Well, there's a question we never asked. <laughs> <laughs> Missed well, out I, on that opportunity. <laughs> I had also had heard a rumor that your name change was because of Harry Potter, which is also HP. And I didn't know if that was true or not. No, that uh, wasn't true. No, I just, <laughs> yeah, I, the, the name change was just uh, from HP to Jack Diamond was because they they wanted, he, he came in and just wanted to change the program, want everybody to yeah. start started Gosh. new and he wanted everybody to you know when somebody saw you they should know exactly who you are you know you're mm-hmm. a cop you're a cleaning lady uh you you work the streets you're a street cleaner you know you just mm-hmm. he wanted everybody to have, you're you're a, a star you're a has-been so i figured my name and it was written on my uh, bag and um at one time um, now it's written right on top of my table so mm-hmm. you yeah. see the name immediately yeah. in my hand here uh this package that i just received in the mail oh, which you bought that? <laughs> i did i did i bought it okay. oh wow I, I, I stumbled upon it. i was like you know what i'm just gonna get it because you should have called i would have sent you one. <laughs> <laughs> i want to be supportive <laughs> maybe we'll, i'll give this one away and then okay. I'll, I'll ask yeah, you for one <laughs> yeah. um but that's an instructional video so yeah. So here's the thing. I've been really terrible, like for years. I, like I've never been able to shuffle a deck of cards. There's like two things I've always kind of wanted to learn a little bit, which is like basic card tricks and right. and and the guitar. And I'm terrible <laughs> at both. Both of them. <laughs> Every couple of years, I try to figure it out, and it doesn't go well. I get frustrated. And now I'm in my mid 40s, and it's still in the same place it was <laughs> 25 years ago. Um, what can you say about uh, Terry Ward Art of Play? It's at the, I got this off of Amazon, but it's also at the, the magicestate.com. It came out in 2014. Uh, yeah. what, what can you tell us about? Because they're still out there in the world and everyone should get one. I, um, well, that's mainly, a, you know, if you're a magician, it's a tutorial video on, uh, mm-hmm. you know, how some of the effects I do uh, work and uh, the best way to perform them. Uh, so they were mainly sold in the, obviously in the magic circles. Uh, but some folks have, you know, bought them for, cause there's some live uh, video on there of me working the streets mm-hmm. and, but, and I was uh, interviewed by my friend Giovanni, who's a phenomenal magician, uh, winner of the gold cups, one of seven, I believe seven winners over many, many years. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, um, and it was a fun little experience to do. And I, I kind of did it to kind of, uh, get me to stop doing the same effects and learn some new stuff. Mm-hmm. And so, um, so I put him out there. I, I mentioned, I, I mentioned I bought it too, because my four year old uh, last year for Christmas, because she's, she also saw a magician at her daycare. Uh, she's like four her, now? She's four. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. Oh my. And, you know, yeah, like that. <laughs> they tell you it goes fast. And they're not lying. And it's worse than that. It's <laughs> double time. It's true. <laughs> and uh, so she has like a very basic, you know, preschool children magic set that she likes to bust out every now and again. So I'm kind of like, I got to learn something. So <laughs> she's going to be, she's going to be interested. And it came with a pee and shell game in it? And it came with, it didn't come with a pee and, uh, this has the pee and shell game. So, and I know she'll totally be into it. So. 
Oh, but wow. her hers, I think, has a PHL game and has like it's it's a lot of like you know the foam ball and the cup and then you put the cup oh on cups and the cups and balls yes yeah. mm-hmm. so um I, you know and she and she does bust it out from time to time and we have to remind ourselves how all the tricks work but so that was the other <laughs> reason why I bought it because I was like if I can learn just a couple of things <laughs> but I really have to learn how to shuffle a deck of cards too that's really where it ends it's like I can't tune the guitar I can't shuffle the deck it's really. <laughs> Maybe we blame our parents for that one because didn't we have an automatic shuffler in our house growing up? We did, but also mom think, could shuffle. Mom could shuffle it. She deck, can't. Like, yeah, hardcore. yeah, she could. And so, it, but maybe was, just because that was there, and we just did that. So right, maybe. Really uh, shuffling shuffling's yeah. not the important part. <laughs> you can give the deck to have somebody else shuffle. That's true. Um, mm-hmm. That's fair. <laughs> <laughs> all right so i'm gonna take a look at it and then i'm gonna be like harry i don't understand what am i doing wrong you're gonna be, he's, you're gonna be getting videos from frank trying to shuffle cards and be like oh okay he wasn't kidding <laughs> all right well all right maybe you just give it up <laughs> go to go go do a different shuffle you mean you can't do this one mm-hmm. yeah maybe yeah, you can but... do down now maybe you can do down the back edge Maybe that might be easier for you. Uh, yeah, it's the I can do. I, maybe I can. I kind of can do the, but I can't do the. <laughs> the after the bridge, you mean? Yeah. <laughs> you do this part. Yeah, you just can't do one. the bridge. Mm. You don't got to do the bridge. Just push them together. <laughs> just do, do a lot of this. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Do that. <laughs> that works. That works. Do you have a really memorable guest interaction, experience, story? Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, Years ago, I used to do a trick where somebody would sign a a card, and then I would uh, make it rise to the top of the deck several Mm -hmm. times. Mm -hmm. And at the time, I was working in the studios, and... I had a summer gig at the downtown Disney, what they called it at the time, at the shopping area there. So I saw a kid that I'd seen a day and a half earlier. And I thought to myself, I think I still have his signed card in the deck. So I went through and found it and I I made him pick it again. And uh, his parents were just like, completely shocked (laughs) and um so he had me sign uh my name on it i signed it gave it back to him Mm -hmm. and about three years ago a lady comes up to me and she says did you ever do a character called the uh by initials the uh the um i went the great hp and she said yes and i said Yes, I did. <laughs> and she said, um, you did a trick for our son. And then you met him a couple of days later and he had signed the card and you made him pick it again. And this is our son. And it was like a you know, 22 yeah. <laughs> year old man standing there, but he opened his wallet and pulled out that card. That's awesome. From 20, you know, 20 some odd years. Yeah. And yeah. it was just like, Wow. Mm-hmm. If that doesn't, you know, show you how much you you uh, you have an effect on people. Yeah. Every time you step out on the street, I don't yeah. know what does. Yeah. <laughs> I have chills. Um, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think so. We were both there back in January when and we saw you, and that was the first time we have watched you together since we were kids, oh, really? and it was like this <laughs> kind of weird, like. <laughs> what is happening right now? Like what's going on? We're adults and we're sitting here watching him again, but watching you interact with kids and, and the audience and all that, it was, I don't know. It was like this weird, like low key emotional moment of like (laughs) you interact with kids and like, Wait, are we not kids anymore? Wait, what happened? <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand. What are I brought we doing? you back a few years. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was, but it was so cool to like see that it's still happening and it's still going on and you're still having this impact and you could see it. You could see it all over the kid's face and you could see how, you know, and he kind of, I think he lingered for a little while. Like he kept wanting to talk to you and see some more. And it was just, it was cool. It was like a cool full circle. <laughs> Let me 
know whether you like it or whether you want to change it. How do you think? How do you feel? You like it. When I cover them up, you say abracadabra. You ready? Here we go. See, the moment you say that, this happens. Okay, it went a little fast, maybe. Some people look confused. I'll do it again. There's, um, uh, I think it's, it might be on the DVD series, but it, it was also in the advertisement for it. I, I performed there and then another cast member was standing there the whole time. And, and uh, she said, did you work, used to work at the Diamond Horseshoe? And she started to tear up. Mm-hmm. And I was like, yeah, I, did I bring you up on stage? She said, no, you brought my brother. And I didn't know why she was tearing up. Um, I was like, well, I just hope he's still alive. Cause yeah. I mean, she says, no, we just, it was our family and you were there. And it's the reason I now work here because mm-hmm. you brought my brother up on stage and he just had the best time. And I was like, yeah. wow. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. so she, and it's on, I think it's, I might be on the DVD or it was on the, anyway, the advertisement for it. Right. Yeah. No. And definitely, you know, you have had a tremendous impact on my life and you know where my <laughs> performing life went because you know streetmosphere in general was like i want to do this kind of character work i don't know what they're doing but this is what i want to do <laughs> and and you know i had to like find my way around which led to the renaissance festival yeah, but sterling and you know i know that every time every day that i have performed over the 20 years now that i always think of you because you know i'm kind of like a i try to not talk too much i'm like that's not me <laughs> so, right. as me but i know that beyond the big extraordinary moments that you know the audience gathers around for it's those moments after and talking to the audience that became so important and like that effect on me is like you know why I got to do it for 20 years I think right it, it, it is okay. it is as such a, an audience connect that's not available you know uh, regularly in theater in the theater world and yeah. you know that was that was tremendous for me and you know I, I, as you're talking about doing your theater work in college and, and connecting to the audience, I was like, oh yeah, I, I really like the parts of it. <laughs> it was just so funny that how, how often that came up of like, just that connection with the audience, you know, it really stands out and really it's your, you know, as much as I would have liked to have learned magic, Terry, it was really, <laughs> it was really how you connected with an audience across the board that really resonated with me and impacted me and influenced me to this day. Yeah. Oh, I appreciate that. Thank you. <laughs> I think that's um, one of, been one of my um, one of the more positive things that you know that I've had that ability to to do. And uh, sometimes uh, you take it for granted, but then you know you meet certain people and you realize you had an effect on you know how they felt about their day. I'll ask that last question before we go. Do you collect, are you a collector or do you like things? Are there things that from your past that you hold on to? Is there anything that holds particular nostalgia for you? I'm a bit of a collector. I, um, as you can see by this room, uh, um, I, but I collect, uh, like I collect, uh, cause I like the P and show game. I have a lot of different collections mm-hmm. and different uh, show games mm-hmm. uh, that have come out over the years. Um, I have a small, collection of magic props um i've always admired the way they built things back in uh the 40s 30s 40s and 50s mm-hmm. and there's some beautiful props that uh, prop magic isn't popular anymore you know it's if you go on to a magic thing it's all about close-up magic and cards and coins and uh you know the illusions are still out there they're amazing but they're expensive mm-hmm. um, but um Prop magic doesn't uh, play out as much as it used to, but I collect I collect um, some Thayer pieces that were uh, two brothers that built uh, amazing props, beautiful pieces of workmanship. Yeah. Uh, and back in the day, they were you know hard to get, and now they're uh, collectors' items. One of them I have. I they think there's only maybe nine of them left. Mm-hmm. Uh, in the United States. So that's kind of a nice, and I bought that, believe it or not, at an antique store. He didn't know what he had. Oh, wow. 
And I was like, hey, I think that's a, <laughs> and I bought it. Yeah. And I didn't even really know truly what it was. I just knew where it came from because of the design on it. And then when I found out what it really was, I was like, whoa. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so now yeah. it just, it just sits up on a shelf. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even know where it is right now. <laughs> oh, it's up over there. <laughs> so that's where I keep, I got, I have a shelf that goes all the way around the room. Oh, wow. that is cool. <laughs> and I'm talking about that piece right up there in the, if you're looking at me, I think it's top, top right. Mm -hmm. Okay. That way. Okay. Yeah. This, this yeah. <laughs> right More there. That's All right. Nice. Okay. Oh, cool. yeah. <laughs> Very nice. Uh, performatoryward.com to learn more, but check out all the Jack Diamond videos out on YouTube. They're all incredible. And uh, you can pick up uh, Terry's 3D, 3 DVD set over. I got mine on Amazon, but the magicestate.com <laughs> as well. Terry, thanks so much. Hey, nice to see you guys in person. Yes. Get to speak with you a little longer than five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> totally.